Hello, this is Jakub and Team United again. I prepared brief appendix to the main presentation. I want to show the second approach we applied. We used genetic programming to optimize our agents. Evolutionary algorithms were popularized in artificial intelligence by John Holland in 70s. Since then, it became standard curriculum in any AI course. It is inspired by natural evolution. Initially, we randomly generate population. We select individuals based on their fitness and mix them together. Some of the offsprings are mutated to guarantee variability in our population. This is then repeated until we obtain good results. One of the most popular directions is genetic programming, which was introduced by COSA in 90s. It automatically creates programs from some high-level statement using evolutionary principle. In fact, I didn't use directly genetic programming, but grammatical evolution. The difference is that grammatical evolution evolves complete programs in an arbitrary language. The structure of the program is defined by grammar. This way, I could generate programs directly for Java. Our work was directly inspired by a rather older paper by Liu, who optimized team of agents for robot soccer competition. In tile world, agents must find a tile and then place it in a hole. In words of soccer, it might be equivalent to a ball and a goal. But except this, tile world is actually a simplified version, as there are only two agents instead of 11, no rival agents, and also small number of actions. Moreover, the world is continuous. Agents use classical see, think and act feedback control loop. We added fourth step for communication to exchange information between agents. There are two levels of thinking in our agent. Low level thinking takes care for the essential functions. This is similar to human. We also don't cautiously control functions like breathing. For our agent, it means it will, for example, pick up a tile, put down a tile or initiate refilling automatically. The high level is then where we apply evolution to optimize way to explore the environment. So, how does the program work? The principle is very simple. The evolved program have tree-like structure. There, the nodes are either vector or scalar operations, or if-then conditions. The leaves are then parameters fetched from memory and communication with the other agents. It can be, for example, vector to the nearest tile, to the nearest hole, vectors to other agents or number of carry tiles. The output of the program is a vector. In each step, the agent then moves in the direction of the vector. To get fitness of the program, we run tile world with agents using the program. The fitness is average of total scores the agents were able to achieve. This figure shows one evolution in environment number two. Size of the population was 500. You can see that fitness of the elite rockets up only in several generations, and then it levels off. This was a quick description on how we employ genetic programming to solve the problem. Before I wrap it up, I want to quickly highlight two methods for cooperation which were utilized. First is communication, and second, refueling strategy. For communication, we use blackboard architecture. Even though sometimes blackboards can look very messy, our blackboard is rather simple. In the blackboard model for communication, agents don't interact with each other directly, but through a blackboard. Since we are limited to three pieces of information per step, we exchange only high-level information like position or states. The rest of the channel is then used for percepts. An agent can ask other agent to send him certain percept. Agent also tries to determine which object might be useful for the other agents. The sequence for sending is solved by two queues with different priority. Second important issue is refueling. It can be divided into two equally important subproblems. We must decide when to refuel and how to execute refueling efficiently. My solution is based on two assumptions. The closer an agent is to the gas station, the cheaper it is to refuel. Also, agent can explore and pick up tiles by refueling. Therefore, it would be wasting to send two agents to refuel at the same time. In this solution, the refueling procedure is triggered based on the distance from the station. An agent waits for the other agents to finish the procedure. If the agent was running out of fuel while some other agent is still refueling, emergency refueling is activated. In fact, the results were rather disappointing for me. Although the automatically generated programs perform slightly better than the handwritten programs, they were rather overfitted for the environment. 
Actually, recent literature proposes genetic network programming as a superior tool for dynamic applications like Tileboard. We would be, be able to achieve much better results. Also, site functions like refueling or memory management proved to be crucial for a successful agent. We had to pay special attention for tuning those parts of agent. This table shows the final elite candidates bred in environment 1, environment 2, and environment 3, and their average scores in other environments. The elite programs perform well in their own environment, but they are worse in the other ones. The most universal candidate is agent number 2. In the final slide, I compare results with the probabilistic agent introduced in the main video. My agent outperforms the other agent in environments 2 and 3. On the other hand, the performance is worse in the first environment. But the agent bred in the first environment have their clear lead over the probabilistic agent. Thank you for watching my video.